Natural Language Processing, or NLP, is a multidisciplinary field combining math, linguistics, and computer science. The goal is to get computers to do useful things with natural language data. And by natural language, we mean the languages that we read, write, and speak in. Useful things such as translation, summarization, answering questions, speech recognition, various forms of classification, assisted writing, and so much more. If you're here, it's almost certain there's some aspect of NLP in your daily life. Your spam filter is a classic one. There's predictive text in your messaging. Conversational devices such as Alexa and Siri are regular fixtures in households. And even search itself has moved beyond keyword matching and now incorporates semantic elements. In this example, where I typed drive from Kensington Market to High Park, Google identified my intent and responded with driving directions rather than the results of a straight keyword search. In industry at large, companies are developing question answering systems to help physicians manage documents and diagnose ailments. Legal firms are extracting entities and relationships from documents to aid in things like president search. And financial firms of all sorts analyze news and other media for information and trade support. NLP has seen dramatic advances in the past few years, but despite that, it remains a challenging field because of the nature of language itself. Language comes naturally to us as humans, and it's arguably our greatest tool. It evolved with us and is a living thing that keeps changing over time. But this power comes with a cost in that natural language tends to be highly contextual and full of ambiguities, metaphors, and expressions. A sentence like, stolen painting found by tree, which is an actual news headline by the way, is open to two interpretations. Beside a tree, a stolen painting was found, or a tree found a stolen painting. And which interpretation you accept depends what you see the prepositional phrase by tree modifying. If it modifies the noun phrase stolen painting, then you get the first interpretation. If it modifies the verb found, then you get the second. This is an example of the prepositional phrase attachment problem and is a form of syntactic ambiguity. A lot of our words contain multiple meanings. A classic example in NLP literature is the word bank in a sentence. Do we mean financial bank or river bank? Most of the time, we use the current context to determine the meaning. This is a form of lexical ambiguity. When we hear that she flew in last night, we assume a person came in on an airplane rather than sprouted wings and flapped over. And despite this course focusing on text, tones and gestures also convey a lot of meaning and intention. How you say it is just as important as what you say. Saying it's hot in here while fanning your face and rolling your eyes could really mean please turn on the air conditioning, or even, I'm bored and tired and I hate you for bringing me here. And the study of how we use language in a practical sense is called pragmatics. A closely related issue is that language isn't there just to inform or instruct. It evolved to serve a lot of different purposes. You can use it to comfort a person in distress, entertain a crowd, or manipulate someone to your ends. Depending on the culture, people often say one thing, but mean something else. Now in day-to-day -day conversation, chances are you wouldn't have any problem with the previous ambiguity examples. As humans, we're masters at handling these ambiguities because of our experience and the general world knowledge we developed growing up. We connect language directly with our experience with the world and with each other and resolve these ambiguities subconsciously and instantly. And by assuming our listener has some base level of knowledge, this allows us to transmit a lot of data in a few words. This is not so easy for computers. We can't simply use a bunch of if-else statements to account for all the ways we use language. It may work for a few cases, but it would be brittle and limited. Fortunately, brilliant people across generations have made incredible strides in NLP and continue to do so. From the early rules-based systems in the mid-20th century, to the proliferation of statistical models in the 1980s, to the deep learning wave today. And we will study their work throughout this course and learn how to apply it in our own projects. Even better, robust, production-ready libraries are available to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Your job then as a creator is to be well-informed enough of the methods and your data and goals to make good decisions about which techniques and tools to use. As a bonus, learning and researching how to get computers to process language at an ever deeper level could in turn teach us more about how we as humans process language and communicate. Before we move on, I want to make a note on this timeline here showing how NLP has progressed from pure rules to incorporating machine learning and deep learning over time. Note that all three approaches are useful and relevant in production NLP systems today. It's not all a matter of dumping data into a deep neural network. Heuristics and rules based on regular expressions or scanning for keywords and tags can help you do things like build a quick prototype or a baseline system, get a better understanding of the problem, plug gaps in your production system, offer greater transparency, work in low-resource environments, 
and handle special cases and failures. And most production systems are often a mix of all three. Let's talk about what we'll cover in this course. NLP is a huge, fast-moving topic, and a single course can't cover it all, but I hope to give you a thorough grounding in the subject. By the end of this course, you'll have a clear, detailed understanding of popular NLP models, detailed enough that you'll be able to implement them from scratch if you wanted to. We'll go under the hood to really understand how these models work and their trade-offs, and look at a variety of techniques for working with text, measuring performance, and more. We'll also use a variety of popular tools and work through common NLP tasks, which you can then adapt for your own ideas and projects. We'll build classifiers, labelers, and translators, among other things. And finally, this course will take you from the very basics all the way up to today's major advances. And once you understand them, you'll be able to keep up with developments in this fast-moving field and select the right tool for your goal. The course is divided into two parts. Part 1 will focus on core fundamentals and classical approaches that can get us up and running quickly. We'll start by learning about the various ways to pre-process text, so things like splitting documents into individual words, modifying words depending on our goals, and tagging words with useful information. Next, we'll talk about popular basic ways to turn text into numbers so our machines can work with them. And once we turn text into numbers, we can start doing things like measuring similarity. After that, we'll look at the workflow of modeling. So looking at the different types of machine learning, evaluating how a model's doing, and dealing with common problems. If you're unfamiliar with common machine learning development flow, this will be useful and a good setup for the following videos. We'll round off part one by applying what we've learned up to that point. Text classification is the most common task in NLP, so we'll cover one way to do that here, and also look at different evaluation techniques. Then we'll look at another algorithm to automatically discover topics in a pile of documents. In part two, we'll dive into deep learning for NLP. We'll start off with detailed coverage of how neural networks work. If you're new to neural networks or need a refresher, this will give you everything you need to follow the rest of the course. We'll then revisit vectorization with word vectors, a more advanced way to turn words into numbers, this time by capturing some relative meaning in the numbers themselves. This will introduce us to the concept of embeddings. Text is inherently sequential, so next we'll look at a way to capture sequence information and build a model to generate language. We'll then take it a step further and enhance these sequence handling models with something called attention and apply that to build a translator. All this will give us a solid grounding to tackle transformers, the dominant architecture of the past few years which has propelled NLP to a whole other level. A whole zoo of transformer-based models have set new highs in several performance benchmarks, but perhaps the best part is how many of these transformer models which cost millions of dollars to train are available to everyone. We'll go over the core architecture in detail, then look at how we can take pre-trained models and through transfer learning, use them in our own projects. In terms of course prerequisites, you'll need to be familiar with Python, and because this course is about demystifying NLP and knowing what's going on under the hood, there is some math and theory involved. If you're uncomfortable with that thought, the good news is the math here is pretty simple. I'm no math maven, so if I can understand it, so can you. And if anything is unfamiliar, we can just hop on YouTube and learn it on demand, which is still amazing to me. No machine learning knowledge is assumed, and we will go over the basics, but if you don't have previous experience with it, I recommend consulting additional resources to bolster your knowledge as we go along. A few caveats about this course. It is English-centric. There's a lot of opportunity to do NLP in other languages, but in this course, we'll be focusing on English exclusively. This course is about processing natural language in text format only, so speech processing is out of scope.